Hold the camera. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Yeah. How's it going up there on the way? You guys good? Yeah, we're gonna fucking door dash right now. Walk up, it's gonna be a little. Kind of kept going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Get busy laughing or get busy dying. Hey guys, uh, it's Sean Shank with the uh, Sean Shank Redemption Podcast coming to you, uh, as always, live from the Underground Laugh Lounge. And uh, before I get started, um, I'm going to start a new thing, which is every week I'm going to be wearing the t-shirt of the merch of other comics that come through here. This week I've got the merch of uh, Mike Merck. He's out of the uh, Lake City, uh, part of AC Jokes. Great crowd talker, very good. If you want to follow him, uh, get at Mike Was Funny uh, across all the uh, social media platforms. Um, and now, after that part's over, I want to introduce the comics this week. Uh, we have got with us, and I'm so excited about this. Well, him, not him. This is our headliner this week. Um, this guy is basically a Midwest country, just been around forever. One of the funniest guys in the country, uh, Jerry Donovan. Thank you very much. Great to be here, and thanks for having me. Yeah, man, I'm, I, was, I was so thrilled uh, when we found out you were coming. And I'm also, and I'm just being facetious, uh, this is one of my good friends. He's a house MC here. Uh, he's our improv instructor, and his name is uh, Brad Miller. Hey, how you doing? Glad to be here. I'm wearing merch, too, actually. Uh, Comedy Deli, if you're interested. Okay, uh, remember, <laughs> cut this in post. Right, so. I have no merch, by the way. I just have that guy. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, it's it's kind of weird how this whole thing happened because um, one of our main guys, Otis Boggs, knows you. He's worked with you before quite a few times. I worked with you years ago. Uh, even last night we had the, uh, the uh, old GM of the South Bend Funny Bone was in here. Right. And you had never worked with her, but she knew you. Mm -hmm. Right, just by reputation and name. Mm -hmm. And she came up to him after the show and was like, I know your name, I know all about you. And it's just, it's funny how, you know, all, just all these little connections. And we actually, the reason uh, that we got Jerry fortunately here, and it's, it was a sad reason, is uh, Dave Dugan, who was supposed to be here this week, uh, he had a family emergency. And we were reaching out all over the Midwest. We were talking to people in Detroit, Indianapolis, yes, uh, Chicago. It was a scramble. It was. It was a scramble because this is a time of year when basically all, you know, your, your good headlines, it's it's a rarity to have somebody like Jerry not have a week in this time of year. And then when, the of all people, um, and I had all these comics looking, of all people, our owner, Sheila, got, and how did that happen? She just like messaged you or I mean? Well, she's been stalking me on Facebook for a that's, while. That's understandable. Uh, no, uh, when, when uh, the uh, effort first started here, I learned about it, I don't know how I read about it, came across it, and Sheila and I had communicated back and forth. I don't live far from here, uh, do have extensive experience, and I said, whatever I can do to help. And I wasn't looking for a gig or a this or a that. Sure, if it happens, great. If not, that's fine too. But uh, whatever my experience I could lend, because I knew it was a new endeavor, I was more than happy to. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it started. Right. And then, uh, you know, I, I do want to interject that it's funny, like, hey man, we scrambled, we looked all over, and we ended up with Jerry. We, <laughs> you know, we got lucky having Jerry. Yeah, we, we you know, uh, and fact of the matter is, like I said, I, I had something that I was going to be doing mm -hmm. that didn't go. I was like, all right, I got a weekend off in November. And then Sheila reached out, and uh, here I am. It was just stupid luck. Serendipitous, as yeah. you call it. it yeah, it, w it is. Because the thing, you know, and it was funny, because after she told me we got you, we started, I, all the feelers I put out were starting to, like, pay off, you mm -hmm. know? And, like, all these different people were saying, hey, I'm, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And then the way? And was that? I said, isn't that the way? It is, it is the way. I've had that happen multiple times. But the thing was, I couldn't have been, I literally was thrilled. When she said Jerry Donovan, I just went, son of, I mean, literally out loud, I went, son of a bitch. <laughs> and I was, and I was just, I remember asking her, I'm like, how the, do you 
you know Jerry? I mean, like, I know Jerry, I mean, he's, uh, and he's like a mainstay. And she's like, oh, we've been friends for forever. And, you know, all in, it was just because all the names are coming out. I'm like, nope, nope, we're good, we're good, we're perfect. So, no. It's always going to have a backup roster, though. You know, you guys know that. You never know. You, you just just never know. Things happen. Absolutely. All the time in this business. And, you know, so I, I know the time, effort, and energy it goes into just simply booking a venue. And people yeah. have no idea. They just think the names magically appear. And there's constant communication back and forth. Yeah, I can. Maybe let me check. No, but maybe. Or yes. You know, and uh, this is one of those times that just happened to fall into place. It, like I said, stupid, stupid lucky. I, I, I was. I, I'm the lucky one. I want you to know that. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Um, the shows last night were just great. Love this venue. And all the comedians out there, this is what a comedy club should be. Amen. Um, I've never been treated better than I have from a hospitality and, and standpoint. Your staff is amazing. I mean, everybody, you can tell, they're not, I have to be here. They want to be here. Yeah. And that helps set the atmosphere for the whole, for the whole endeavor. It really is. It starts there and just emanates. You know, the staff, you know, hey, what can I get you? You need me to come back? You know, those kind of things. Um, so, no, there's a very good thing happening here in Niles. And uh, we just got to keep it going. And I commend you because you started... Comedy-wise, uh, I don't know what's worse, like summer or in the fall, because we all know, everybody knows, comedian-wise and, and venue-wise, uh, you know, you start up in the fall, which you guys start in September. Yeah. Okay, Friday night is high school football. Mm -hmm. Saturday is college football. Mm -hmm. yep. And you got Notre Dame right down the road, so it's like, hey, we were packed. Notre Dame was on, on the road. Uh, today, Notre Dame's a day game. And I think that reflects in tonight's, you know, what we're looking at and anticipating audience-wise. Right, yeah. Because you were really sold out for a show. Right. It means something, yeah, absolutely. And I, my anticipate is a 3.30 kickoff against Wake Forest. So they're done by 6.30. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, you know, if they if they win and do great, then people go, hey, all right, let's go. You know, if they don't, well, we'll see. Uh, yeah. 9 30 show will be the real tell because you can get your nap in, then get up, get down, <laughs> and come on in. So. Yeah. And it's it it's an interesting dynamic, uh, this show too, because not only did we get you, which you know, I'm just gushing over here, but it's completely legitimate. You know, I just I'm so happy, but there's other things that are happening this week. Brad, um, who's been a thespian for over what? Years. Yeah, a long time. Yeah, I'm old. Yeah, just get over it. Okay. <laughs> but also been doing stand up for 10 plus years. He's the leader of our improv group. But this is his first feature weekend at a comedy yep. club. Yep. And you did great. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. I, it's, it's something I've always wanted to do, but I was just waiting for my opportunity. And I, to be straight with you, Jerry, I got I got to kind of confess something here. Uh, I knew who you were. I had heard about you. I'd never seen you perform until last night. And the, my first thought is like, man, we're a lot alike in a lot of ways. Not that we look alike. I'm not trying to no, no, insult no, no. you. I, I understand. But your humor and your delivery and stuff, I was like, I, I see some of the same kinds of things that I'm striving to do. Sure. So it was great to see you work last night. It really was. Well, and, and you know, it's like a, it's a tandem thing. Starts with the staff, comes to you. And then Elise did marvelous at yeah. MC. And I was like, man, okay, this is spot on. And the beauty of it is, I'm in the green room right behind here, I can hear everything. And that's hugely important because I listen for the first minute or two, and when you get that first, boom, there, okay, there's laughter in the room, and these people are here to have fun. That's half the battle. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then he gets on and starts doing his, I'm like, hey man, dial it back. Don't make me work. <laughs> and I kid, because I love when that happens. And yeah. I'm not saying, I don't want to say, well, I'm challenged or this or that. Nah, man, you know, I get to back clean up for this crew. Yeah. yeah. So, wait, you know, beautiful. Yeah. So. And it, <laughs> I love last night. Uh, it was second show, when they were doing, they were doing, one of the things that, if you don't know, when you're a headliner that you have to contend with, is there a point in the show where they drop checks, right? Right. Yep. I'm glad you mentioned that. Oh, man. And you did, I never seen anybody do what you did last night. And he, he started, they're doing math at the front deck so everybody can see it. Right. 
And, you know, they're, they're not even paying attention to what's going on. They're being a little bit talky about it. He starts stalking up to him. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the people, I think one of our waste staff was there, he's like, no, no, no. I was waiting for the Australian narrator to start hunt, talking about the hunt. <laughs> and it's funny because it got right up on them, and they still were. They had no, they had no clue. Story. But everybody, and see, I know, and you guys do too, when that hat, they become the focus. I could be up here juggling, you know, hatchets, but that's the focus. That's what everybody's looking at. What's going on? So I'm like, all right, you got, I want, I want to play too. And uh, yeah, I just kind of walked up, and I thought when I walk up, it's going to be, oh, no, they kept going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, okay, who didn't did, even phase him. <laughs> oh, you know, who ordered the tax? You know, and the whole, you know, and uh, it was just so funny. And uh, yeah. that's what's beautiful about this setup is they're so close. Yeah. They're part of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm not that go at somebody, you know, guy, but I like to have fun with people. Yeah. You know, I'm not huge on crowd work, but it does. I, I intersperse it, you know, mm -hmm. when me. So. Yeah. They're good at it. I mean, and the thing is, you're very, it's funny because you're really likable with it. I noticed too, like you, you do that thing where it's almost like you kind of throw a rabbit shot into the, the midsection with something you'll say, like especially with the towns and stuff. But then you'll pull it back and you're like, ah, I'm messing with you. But then you'll, you'll pull it back and ah, I'm just messing with you. Or, hey, we're, you know, you, you, and you make it so friendly, like specifically that guy sitting there, second show last night, mm -hmm. you know. And, I think that kind of back and forth with it works so well, and it makes the audience super comfortable. Right. But it's neat to watch. Well, and with him, the go-to line there could have been, dude, you're way overdating. You're out of your league, man. And I kind of did, because I said, she looks like a runway model, and you look like you're going to change her oil. <laughs> it was true. Yeah. Now, and that was true. It was. That was true. Yeah. You know, and he said, well, I have an eight and a six-year-old. I'm looking at her thinking, what Girl Scout troop are you in? Uh, but, you know, it was, and then I got, got the dynamic. The funniest one was, I think, first show, Rick sitting right here. Yeah. Now, Rick was enjoying it. Rick's not a laugher. He's a head nodder. Oh. Okay? Yep. His wife couldn't stop. She was one, I had a, a, a beer snorter there. There was a, a, yeah, snorter, a snorter over here, a snorter, a snorter over there, there yeah. and then she was sitting right there. Now, he was a fun guy, mm -hmm. and I very easily could have said, dude, I love that shirt, man. Now, where is the goodwill? <laughs> right. Okay, but I don't, because, and then, and then what does he do? I'm being friendly. You guys saw it, the yeah. interaction. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the one taking the body shots from him. And he goes, you want to know what it's like being 65? I said, yeah, sure. He goes, well, let's step outside. Yeah, you, you were going to take you. I was like, dude, man, we're having fun here. And then when he said, let's step outside, I'm like, so I can help you to your car? <laughs> you know, but there's where you, uh, you know, again, don't be mean. Have fun. Let's yeah. move on. You know, yeah. and uh, I never, you know, you can really, words have, words have meaning and power. Yes. And when you when you embarrass somebody in front of a room full of people who really isn't into it, that's 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 a hard place. You can turn them against you. There's some of them who say, "Bring it, man! Give me all you got. I, yeah. I want to be part of this." And I'm thinking, "Yeah, I know you want because you'd like to be up here, and someday maybe you will." Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, okay, bring me your best shot. Do this and that. I want to be involved. Okay, you know we can go that way, but that too is a slippery slope. Yeah. Right. The second show is another interesting dynamic. This whole front row was a family group. I mean, they were all like married, related to each other, and then the second row was like girls' night out. It's like seven or eight women that all knew each other and probably all worked together or whatever. So you had that group and this group were kind of uh, foils to play with. I mean, you yeah, were, yeah. It, it was, was two different dynamics. Because you're right. Yeah. And beautiful women there. But they then capped by the <laughs> two guys that didn't like right. one of these things is not <laughs> like the other. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I thought to myself, the women all walked in, sat down, and then the guys came. Oh, here's an empty chair. At each end of the table. They're it's stalkers. Like, They've been following We got the exits ball. blocked, girls. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all fun, man. Yeah. All fun. Great time. Well, I've got another couple uh, shows coming up tonight, and it looks like, you know, said, we're going to probably be, I know the first show probably almost sold out, the second show, I think it will be interesting to see what happens with it, but I'm going to hazard a guess and say we're probably going to be two-thirds 
Yeah. Yeah. Where we get tough walk ins. Well, it's just so cold. That's the thing, too, that people don't understand. Colder. Like, it gets colder, people need something to do. It gets dark at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. You know, they just they want to come out and do something fun. Um, you know, and, and comedy is a great way uh, to do it. Now, one of the things you brought up earlier that I want to mention is it's not just that we have our first club and Brad's been we've been working together for years he's featured headline right. and all this different stuff but an actual club since since right, which right. Is single shows until now yeah right 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 yeah at least this is her first club weekend too really I'm telling you and it, I'm so happy to be here to be part of both of those that's it. she's genuinely funny she, she Isn't really that weird? is uh, they loved her yeah they loved her you know and uh, and from the MC standpoint, she was spot on, you know. Uh, anybody celebrate anything, things like that. Yeah. And again, when you're back there and you're picking up, okay, who is this person who, you know. All right. Um, I was like, when I come out, I go, wow, give it up for Brad. I know way more about him than I started the night with, huh? Yeah. You know, and everybody chuckles and has a good laugh on that one. But uh, it connects. That's, that's amazing, you know, and, I, and I'm just glad to be part of it. It's, you know, it's one of those, I remember back to my very first club MC was at Crackers at the Keystone when that was still around in 96. And they gave me Lance Montalto. Okay. Okay. And the intention, you know, Lance, even at that time, was super seasoned. He was crushing stages and everything. But they intentionally gave, like, basically me that show because he's, he was like your status, just... This person's been around forever, knows what they're doing, can carry a show, great to work with, you know, just all these great factors. And, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm so happy that it was you because Dukins, that way, mm -hmm. Dukins was instrumental in getting, helping my career back in the day. And now, you know, with Brad and Elise coming in on this show, I was just, I, I was ecstatic. So it, mm -hmm. it's been nice. Um, but, uh, I just want to thank, yeah. uh, thank you for all those wonderful accolades. I mean, that means a lot. But anybody knows, I'm stuck on, he's been around forever. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look, comics are I mean, like wizards. I'm the AARP of comedy, you know. <laughs> so, which is fine, man, you know. Uh, you got, you, you just take, and that's what helps with life experiences. I got a bunch of them. So, yeah. You know. But it's, you know, it's, that, that's the thing, though, it's, like, yeah, there are, are comics out there that are in their 20s and 30s that are, are decent and can really, you know, do well and everything. It's great. But I would take a comic that's been at it 20, 30 years and knows how to salvage something that fell apart or knows how to handle things. Mm -hmm. You know, we very specifically selected for the opening weeks of this place comics that we knew, right, could mm -hmm. deal with coming into a place, and because basically you have to train the population around the area how to be comedy club audiences. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds really strange to people don't know what that means, but people don't know how to act when they come into these places. To leave off with Mark Canope was the best movie you could have made. Because A, hilarious, yep, very, fun. very seasoned, and Mark's one of these guys, he'll have suggestions, mm -hmm. And, uh, but doesn't come across as the, hey, know-it-all and the this and the that. Right. Friendlier guy you couldn't meet. Right. And the funny, my Mark Knopes, I, I, I book Mark a ton. And that's kind of tough because he has, you know, his GM gig that he does. So you always got to kind of work around right, that. Right, right. And we're accustomed to it. Because I'll say, hey, man, where you at? Because I got nothing, then, then we move on. My Mark Knopes story is... And this is in the comedy thing, there's certain accomplishments. Okay? The first time I ever featured with a hotel room was over a place on the east side. Mark was the headliner, I was the feature. A guy named Kevin Zioli ran the room in the show. Kevin just passed. Oh, and no, breaks no. my heart. Breaks my heart. No. Never failed to crush. Okay, mm -hmm. so he's running, I'm feature, Knope's headlining, and they have an MC on there who just, right out of the gate, gross, graphic, vulgar, and it's like, whoa! Zioli fired him during the show. 
As soon as the kid gets off stage, uh, Kevin goes up and said, you're done, get out. And he took over emceeing, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. So now here I am featuring with my first room, which I'm thinking this is an accomplishment. But now I gotta go up in front of an audience that's just shocked, kind of ready to walk. Mm -hmm. okay? Right, right. But fortunately <laughs> enough, I was able to write the ship. Yeah. And early on. And I'm just going into what I do, take it or leave it, hope you like it. Mm -hmm. And we did fine. Okay? Nice. Very nice. The next morning, I called Mark. I go, hey, man, how do you think I did? He goes, you dug us out of a deep hole. He said, you got it back on track. And then he just, he just, I mean, he was Mark. Right. And, and, and it was almost like by the end, they forgot about this jughead who emceed it. You know? That's cool. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Now, the other thing, hotel room, it's a holiday inn with a suite. <laughs> Right? And I'm as like, a feature? As a feature, right? <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> and so, I'm in the hotel, post show. It went high, it, it, it went great. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there, and, just, and all of a sudden, from the room next door, I hear three guys talking. And the first line I hear is, We know it was you. And I'm like, Uh oh. And then it got heated more so as the conversation. No, it wasn't me. Yeah, dude, we know it was you. And I'm like, uh, how thick is this drywall? <laughs> <laughs> Please let him have good aim. Yes. You know what I mean? And I was yeah. like, this is, this is comedy, huh? Maybe I should go back to insurance or something, because this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, after like an hour and a half of this, I'm trying to not listen, but kind of listen. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, conversation stopped. Door opened, door closed, never opened again. And I was like, well, okay, I don't know how his night turned out, but, you know, I was glad to wake up the next morning, man. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so. I've, I've heard of, of some stories like that where somebody's staying somewhere mm -hmm. and things just went very south. Right. So, all right. Let me ask uh, ask you guys. Um, they have these things called comedy condos. All right. And you brought it up because I was going to ask about something else. But we'll get to it. Not naming any clubs mm -hmm. specifically, but what is the worst comedy condo experience that you have had? Do we have to stick with condos? No, no. Just a shared just house or something like that? Housing, whatever. What about a hotel? Or is that a different? Oh, any category? of it. Just, yeah, just anything in the category. We're just basically worst staying experience. I know what mine is. Well, what's yours? Um, and this club, I don't even think this club's around anymore. And I love those those folks. But it was the, the Omaha uh, Funny Bone. Funny Bone, okay. Yeah, the one where I, I roll up. And it was, as you're driving through town, the houses get a little bit older and not as nice and then you see some liquor stores and then there's a gun shop mm -hmm. and you're just like son of a bitch and it's getting further and further away from the club too and finally get to and it was an apartment complex and there was dog feces all over the ground you know on the sidewalks and everything so i'm playing hopscotch getting up there and i get up to the door where the apartment was and there's a door and two ceiling to floor windows and everything was full of bullet holes it was like somebody just went, you know, just drive by. And that's where I stayed for the weekend. And it was the weekend after a certain comic, and I'm not going to be smirch his name, but it was well known that if you stayed somewhere after he was there, you did not touch any of the condiments, you did not eat anything in the fridge, and you probably don't even want to sleep on the beds. Okay. And it was the week after that. So, I mean, I literally was sitting on it, sleeping in a chair in the main room, <laughs> not touching anything. Definitely not turning on any black lights. So, did you hover over the toilet? Definitely yeah, not. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so what, uh, what was yours? So, uh, I'm going to go with, and I own this in part because, you know, you take gigs, mm -hmm. you give you extra money, but no hotel. Right. Okay, so I opted for one of those. And uh, I just, I'm a Motel 6 guy, okay? I mean, it's the least common denominator in, in, in it. Right. And some of them are actually okay. They mm -hmm. remodeled a lot of them and things like that, so, but it's hit and miss. Now, this one was a miss. I pull up into the parking lot and I'm like, all right, I'm pretty
pretty seasoned, and I'm, you know, seen a lot in life, and I'm like, all right, okay. Um, urban strip club right next door. Jesus. A lot of old cars, some up on, you know, blocks, some mattresses and box springs. Oh, man. They trust me, I looked, they just weren't salvageable. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, set the client, I said, okay, you know, don't judge your book by its cover. Walk in, and you know, you always, it's always welcome when they have the bulletproof window and the little drawer that everything goes in and out of. And oh, this is wow. three o'clock in the afternoon. And this is a hotel. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And uh, the lobby, I look around and I think, they're kind of my people, you know. Um, but when you have people who are like clawing at their face and creaking okay, going on, I said, all right, let's just, it's daytime, let's make this happen. When I come back, I'll just run from the car into the room. And so, do the deal, I think it was like 40 bucks, which is always a telltale sign. Right, you should right. know. Yeah, you should know. Anything with value or motor in or, you know, just be cognizant of. So next thing you know, I go open the door and walking down, there's three dogs that are just roaming the hallways. Now there's no leashes on these guys. And I'm thinking, I don't know, what breed are they, Crip or Blood? Or <laughs> redneck or Clan or I don't know. And I'm like, and they're eyeballing me like, hey, fresh meat on the cell block, you know? Look at those, look at those calves. And, uh, but he works out. <laughs> you know, <right? laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm gonna kick my cardio gear. And like, <laughs> so I'm just walking, and I go in the room, and I'm like, no, no, uh uh. And uh, so I decide this is not for me. And go back, dog's still roaming around. And I said to the front desk lady, hey, somebody's dogs are just roaming the hallway. Hand to God, she says, yeah, we don't know whose they are. All and right. evidently, this, it was like an accepted thing. And I was like, you know, now I'm thinking, with rabies. <laughs> what are you doing about it? You know, like, yeah. It's just like, this is how we live now. Yeah, yeah and you know, you know, I don't know how, what the number is that consists of a pack of dogs, but I'm thinking three is not far off. You had a couple oh. of buddies who may be uh, down, the, down the hall at the vending and ice machine. And they're, you know, I don't know. And I'm like, you know, cats and dogs have Don't feed them after midnight, they just breed it. Right. So uh, I just go back, I go, all right, look, I can't do this. I'm, I'm not gonna, I ain't get my $40 back. <laughs> so I said, you know what? That's fine, because my health insurance deductible is 500. <laughs> so, you keep the 40, and someday maybe I can talk about this on a podcast in Niles, Michigan. <laughs> and here we are. It's the circle of life. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Dude. You know, and the thing that's frightening, that's, that almost seems a, a bit cinematic in the description, because it almost seems like some dystopian Mad Max beyond thunder that we're just wild yes. animals roaming the yeah. walls. Yeah. Yeah. And some guy behind the glass is like, well, we don't know what to do with him. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, 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 the, the only one that comes to mind is there was a motel I was staying at in uh, in, in Texas, and it, it was like a it was a motel, and I didn't think about it at the time when I went to bed that night, and it was another forty dollar kind of yeah. cheapo motel or whatever. There was evidently a gap underneath the door about maybe half an inch or something like that. Didn't think nothing of it. Went to bed, get up in the morning, and uh, my entire room was covered in crickets. Uh, like oh. thousands of them had crawled in over the night, or, you know, they were just, you couldn't step without stepping on crickets. They were everywhere. So was that one of the outside facing It was the outside facing hotels, right? So oh, just those are so covered in crickets. Oh my, my God, dude. It was in my shoes. It was, I mean, it, I, I was finding cricket meat in pieces for like days. I was there for the week. It was crazy. I'll never forget it. It was almost biblical uh, in one of those right? It was oh, terrible. God. Yeah, you, you pay what you get, what you pay you for. Get sometimes. what you pay yeah. for. Is there some dude outside your window going, "Let my people go"? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was just you know. Well, and, and see, people think, you know, I I know it, it, it's like when you're starting out. When I was, it's like, man, get a hotel, get a hotel. Okay. Oh, this is great. Look at me. Well, over time, and it doesn't take that long to realize hotels suck. Yeah. Yeah. For our occupation. Yeah, you know, yeah. get done at eleven, maybe out by eleven thirty midnight. You're wired. 
okay, you're watching, you know, crime stories and sure. You know, you it's always down. the boyfriend who <laughs> did it, just so everybody knows. But bottom line is, if you nut off three, three thirty, you're doing good, mm -hmm. right? Well, only to come to find out, okay, it's for the comedian. So we'll put them down by the freight elevator across from the house. <laughs> yes. With Riverdance rehearsing upstairs <laughs> adjacent to the arcade that has an air hockey tournament going on. And then that's at 808. Right. Yeah. And then the and then if you're in there with the uh, the craft club who's decided that's their weekend get together, you get uh, you know, Mabel and uh, Martha yelling at different entities. Do they have the maple waffles down there this week? And it's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, you know, hotels, and then don't get me started on kids in the pool area. Oh yes. Because they always show you the picture of the pool, and nice and calm and serene, and you get in there, and it's Timmy and Tommy's seventh birthday. Mm -hmm. They're twins, and they each yeah. got to bring nine kids. Yep. You know, the thing is, it's not, this isn't even hyperbole. Like, everything that you, there's, there's a place up in uh, St. Paul, and it was some, when the Holiday Inn had the, uh, I can't remember what they call them, like, Pleasure Dome is the only thing coming to my mind. The Holiday Dome. Holiday Dome, thank you. Yeah, I think that's a porn shop, isn't it? The I, that's why I was, yeah. I was like, this is not right. Um, but I remember we were staying in a Holiday Dome, and they had us in the rooms that were right there where the, like you said, Air uh, hockey table, a basketball court, yeah. a basketball court. By right, like what were they thinking? And they had a big family reunion, and all I was wanting to do after being on the road for like ten hours was sleep. And all I hear is squeaking sneakers, mm -hmm. air hockey, the you know they gave the, you know, the the beep 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 you know when they went you know tickets and stuff like that. it was mm -hmm. it was brutal. Oh yeah, the ski ball machine. Ski ball. That. Yeah, yeah. They had ski ball. They had all of that stuff. And you're right there. Right there. Yeah, and because everything was in this big courtyard type thing. Yeah. The yeah. arcade was here, and then they had rooms, a bank of rooms on the back side. And I'm, I was like, why not put everybody that was related to this event in those rooms right. so they could suffer it? Yeah. And put me, at, you know, one of the hundreds of other rooms you got. Nope. That's like right there. Yeah, and they. So when you were saying that, I was having flashbacks to that moment mm -hmm. up in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. Not funny. And then you look out and you're like, where's the hot mom when I need one? <laughs> oh, Just to, you know. Uh, yeah. Not to be found, Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Well. <laughs> so now let's go to the best experience you had. What was the best lodging experience that you had? Um, Reno, Nevada. Okay. Uh, was that one of the... Um, Big hotels there and just got treated way better than I deserve um, and pay was decent but uh, yeah, I got free food free drinks you know my room was nice every day I was there and it was just a great experience yeah I really enjoyed Reno mm -hmm. let's go back to it too actually it was fun what, what, where, 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 where were you work? yeah what was it? I'm trying to think of the name of the casino I was at it was one of the big casinos there in Reno and I was trying to think of it it's been a few years ago, I don't recall what it was. Okay. But it was really nice. I mean, you know, they had really good bourbon there too, which is you know, one of my particular favorites. So, okay. Yeah. You? you Got to be Naples, Florida. Okay. You know, some resorts right on the uh, the water. They had a big boardwalk that went out to the mangroves. Mm -hmm. And on the back side of the hotel, it opens up into the palm trees. You know, crystal blue pool. They, it was it was like something you know we talked about the these idyllic pictures that they take. This was like that. I mean, just beautiful mm -hmm. waterfalls, everything, um, and it was it was fantastic. Like you, they treated us great yeah. you know, the whole time. The only thing that was a little bit weird for me is I was walking through the main, like the boardwalk because I wanted to go all the way out to the water to see the mm -hmm. Gulf, and I don't know what the animal was. I, I don't know what they. I know they've got panthers and different things down there. I was walking along the boardwalk and this big cat just jumped from the mangroves, landed right in the middle of the boardwalk. And I just kind of froze. And it's one of those moments like, I'm not fast enough, you know. Nobody this, is. Right, you no know. No human's going to outrun a... No. no. But not even be able to, like, you know, I might be able to like stick my thumbs in inside, but those razor quiet. It's just one of those things like, well, if this thing tries to come after me, I'm a dead man. Right. 
and it just regarded me for a minute and then right back in okay on the other side and so that was the only i mean of the whole stay that was the one weird moment but it was just so surreal to see this massive predator land look at me and go mm, you're not tasty and then <laughs> and you, you know what you know what the reason is he wasn't hungry I don't know what time of the day it was, but think about that. It, it was, it had been about 5 o'clock, actually, I think, okay. like 4 or 5 o'clock. Yeah. So he, he had already eaten that. Whatever he nailed that day earlier, he was fine. And, got that. Sorry. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> just I never really, like, put thought to it as to why it happened. <coughs> I just, I remember the jump down, look, and then, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, most most, cat, most cats are ambush predators too, right? So if your back was to him, you you might have got eaten that day. See, I would have been fine because I watched Jack Reacher. <laughs> I would have handled that handle it then. and his tribe. No, uh, and, and you know what's funny? Yeah, we, we all watch Joe Rogan on his stuff from time. Right. Yep. He's always talking about animals and people, and his big fear I think is the bear. Mm -hmm. he's like he's, and he's an expert on all these different bears, you know. Right. The other one is, you know, crocodiles and alligators and stuff like that. People have this sense, of, and sharks, people have this sense of it, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm not vulnerable. I'm okay. I'm a, I'm a human being. So we have domination over all you guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? If they're in a zoo, you're good. Yeah, right. But if we're you're worst in, physically yeah, prepared if for we're, If you're in their neighborhood, yeah. good luck with that. Good luck with that. Well, we're so disconnected from nature. This isn't like caveman days where we're always on the alert, mm -hmm. you know, with weapons and things and being at least somewhat prepared to jab a stick at them and try to fend them off. Right. We're toast. I mean, if a bunch of wild animals came into Niles all of a sudden, I mean, it's feeding time. You know? Absolutely. So, you know. Well, and the other thing is you bring up a good point, like, you know, uh, caveman and, and, those, and those types of things walking with the spear. It's like, you know, the panther wasn't hungry, but the caveman was. <laughs> yeah. And he had three buddies with him, okay? And they were out looking. And here you go. So the tables have turned. Right. So, I heard something. Fight. I, I, I was heard something. Talk about cavemen. Something interesting. It was a survival uh, evolution for uh, the human species was uh, the ability to snore uh, was to warn off animals while the people were, were sleeping. So it became a, a survival thing that humans developed was the ability to snore. It's not something negative. It's something that we developed really? to scare animals away uh, back in the day, so to speak. So my wife has been protecting the shit out of me. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Thanks, Betty. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> what? That's what I heard. You just pulled that out of No, I swear to God, I was watching that. Wait a second. Rose, does he snore? <laughs> because I think he's trying to get it recorded. Right. right. Like, no, no, I'm doing you a service, baby. Yeah. I'm it's keeping it's actually I have a on the motorcycle. <laughs> he's keeping the marauders at bay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're outside the house in the suburb protect. with their pitchforks and everything. Like, oh, was that well, a we, snore? We can't oh, go in there. Did you hear that? Is there a grizzly in there? <laughs> oh. Joe Rogan's outside. That sounds like a black bear. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. And then he'll know the, the breed and, and the whole thing. Yeah. So, uh, okay, oh, my best on. lodging story. Yes, please. Okay. And uh, I want to preface it with uh, I'm not just saying this because I haven't been paid yet. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys cooked up for comedians here? ranks with anything I've ever been involved in, and I mean that. And I, and, I, and I say that because, so I just, I never would do this, but, um, so, um, Sheila, okay, mm -hmm. she says um, things like, okay, uh, and she's texting me this, listen, when you get in, the light switch is on the right hand side, when you need coffee, coffee's over here. The things are there. Um, I just got new 400 count, uh, 400 count threaded sheets, but if yep. those aren't good enough, I can go get six, maybe 800. Uh, oh, also there's a weighted blanket. If you want the weighted blanket, it's sitting on the back of the uh, Lazy Boy. Now, if you don't want the weighted blanket, just go ahead and you put it on and you're hot, just kick it off. 
Okay, and it goes on and on and on. If you need toilet paper, it's sitting right there. If the roll goes out, the spares are kept here. And I'm like, Sheila, you know I've slept in my car, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she just wanted to make sure everything was perfect. She does that, yeah. And, it's, and then I ran into her out there, and we were having fun with it because I'm like, kiddo, you're great, you know? Do you remember that there was a Seinfeld where Jerry was going to a gig in Minnesota and he had the female agent with him who was coordinating the whole thing? Remember this? Mm -hmm. And every, every now Jerry, they have cashews, but if you don't want cashews, we can get your pretzel. Now they have bottled water, but if you heard seltzer, we can do that. And he's like, it's good, you know. And she looked, you know, I just it was more than you know. Yeah, we've we experienced many of those kinds of texts in the construction around here, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 She is. She is a violent texter. I mean, and, she just bah, 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 bah. well and, and the beautiful thing is first of all having it having accommodations of that quality at the venue. Because you know sometimes it's a 14 mile ride from the hotel. We've heard other comedians say that. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. And then you gotta do that. And then you gotta drive back. Mm -hmm. You got drunks, you got deer <laughs> you got me, uh, so those three combined, sometimes something's going to happen and it ain't good. But fact is, is that that's the beautiful thing about it is, you know, you can go upstairs, chill, hang, uh, breakfast across the street, complimentary, you know, the, the food and a couple of drinks. And I commend them for saying two drinks in the restaurant you, because I've seen comedians empty a bar. Yeah. Gratis. And then they ruin it for everybody. Yep. Um, you know, she also has a thing to the fitness center, mm -hmm. which is the most polite way I've ever been told that maybe I need to slim down. <laughs> yeah, hey, Jerry, we just, as a suggestion, maybe yeah. go get a couple of miles in on the treadmill, you know. Uh, but no, and then tomorrow, a breakfast buffet and all this stuff. And, yeah. uh, and just to be able to like go from upstairs down here to do this. That's magic. Yeah. Yes. At two thirty, I'm like, all right, I can get a little nap in, twenty minutes. I didn't. You know, you check the scores and everything, but you get to lay down, relax, and then and then here we are. Yeah. So, uh, <coughs> top notch. Kudos to Sheila. Uh, it, it, you know, for for, and you know, you can tell the focus was on comedian comfort mm -hmm. and and making sure that they had everything they needed. I mean, I'm sitting in a bark lounge across from a fireplace. Just sitting there, I feel like, you know, uh, just, I'm mean, very zen. And post-show, that was awesome. So, yeah, yeah. on wine space. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that, well, here's the thing that's amazing about Sheila and Carl, is they, a year and a half ago, Sheila, and I've known Sheila for over, I mean, you've been friends with her forever. Right. Um, and we became fast friends when I was the GM of uh, Laugh Comedy Club. And she reached out, out to me out of the blue, which, oddly enough, I shouldn't have said anything out loud to the universe. It's my own fault. But I had said, you know what? I think I'm just going to semi-retire. I said, and I, these were the exact words that I used. I said, I will only take a gig if, one, the money's stupid. Two, I really like the comic that is on the gig with me. Or three, it's a place that I want to play. Right. Other than that, because it, you know when you're full time comedy or whatever, and you're trying to like grow your your whatever, you will take a lot of gigs that sometimes maybe you don't want to. And so I said that out loud, and once I did, the show started pouring in, and it was always somebody I really liked, you know, where the money was just ridiculous, or it was something where like we could go do that gig. Right. And then out of nowhere, Sheila calls me. She says, "I'm going to start a comedy club. Would you do it with me?" And I, I told my wife this. Anybody else, including my wife, said, I want to start a comedy club. I would have said no. I'm trying to send my retirement. Mm -hmm. But she always had a special place in my heart. So I said, okay. And what she did was she said, let's build this so it is perfect for comedy and perfect for comics. Because she loves comics. Right. So it doesn't mean she just loves comedy. Mm -hmm. She loves comics. And so they put so much effort into trying to make that nice. And there was some discussion about having hotels every week. And we all said, look, your expense is going to be ridiculous. And you were talking about Notre Dame earlier. 
Gotcha. Oh you my goodness. Get in a room out for thousand dollar room if you could get one at all. We're right. staying up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's a Notre Dame. Yeah. Land, yeah. You know, and it's I don't crazy. know how far south they go. Well, it's, I mean, my God, I've I've heard of them staying down in Plymouth, in Logan, which is like two hours and some change away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was it was just ridiculous. And then, but then you know, we had that space all the way upstairs, <clears throat> and it was a thing like. Well, we could put some apartments up here. We've got a local MC core, so why not do that? Mm -hmm. And so I thought they were just going to make some nice rooms. Excuse me, but and then it's like it has a coffee bar, and mm -hmm. there's an alarm up there that if anybody comes up there that you don't like, you push a button, the police arrive. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's so many things that, and they intentionally did it because they want you to. To not feel unwelcome. They want you to feel like you're at home. It's like you said, you're in the parka lounger, got the fireplace going, there's a big TV on the wall, you know, it's just, I mean, it's it's nuts. Now, let's not leave out the lighted toilet. Yeah. Okay? Right. Because I go in, I walk, <laughs> the toilet lights up. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's wel welcoming me. You know, if I'm a toilet, I have to see some guy like me, I'm like, oh, Christ, oh, God. You know, <laughs> this thing lights up, uh -huh. and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And then I stepped out, then I stepped back in, I stepped out, and I'm like, oh, my God, look at this, what are you? I took a picture and sent it to my wife. I'm like, look at large now. The first baby. time I've taken a picture of the combination's toilet. <laughs> so, so all of a sudden... You know, I'm sitting there watching, I flip on the light, it goes off, and I think, oh shit, I broke it. <laughs> oh my God, and I don't want to do this to Sheila, so I'm like, who do I call? Do I call an electrician, a plumber? Is there a guy that does both? How is this happening? <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, and then I turned the light off, I came back on, and I thought, all right, just saved myself 180 bucks. <laughs> uh, but that is like... Could have called Rick, he was right there. <laughs> yeah, could have called Rick, right? Could have called Rick. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> but I just thought, oh, dear Lord. I mean, that is one that I can honestly say I've never seen a lit toilet. <laughs> I may be the last, I mean, I see people paying with their watches now. and I've been lit all this in a toilet. toilet. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. And then you even talk about it, Hank, is it, hey, if your pee is purple, you yeah. can see a doctor? Yeah, like, that's not happening to show. I'm like, Brad, who do I go, where's the nearest <laughs> clinic, Brad? <laughs> But thanks, for, thanks for that, huh? It's red now. Wait, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> no, wait for it. Wait for it. Well, that's, it's funny that you mentioned that because when they kept adding things, it's like every week there was something new upstairs. Mm -hmm. And she took me upstairs, you know, in all of us that, you know, Rose, Brad's wife, who's Rose out here, is out here with us in the, uh, the audience. Um, Brad put in tons of work, you know, building this place. And so we go upstairs and she goes, look at this. And the toilet lights up, and I'm just looking at it. She's so excited, but in, instead of being in awe or whatever, I just looked at her and went, "Why?" <laughs> <laughs> have, we, have we been missing out as a society? Is this something that everybody's doing? Because I've not heard of this. It's I know there's a lot of trends that I don't keep up with. <laughs> by, by the way, just for clarification, Rose isn't in the audience. Rose is the audience. <laughs> so, hey, hey, I'm not trying to pump up our numbers here. No, I'm just saying. No. Uh, but yeah, no, I just. You ever seen do the wave? It's a right. <laughs> a one woman wave. Yeah, just run back and forth and do it. Uh, so yeah, that's it. It made me laugh. But her sure that this was her reasoning. She says, you know, sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night, and she. This is what I mean. She and that's brilliant. That so is brilliant because you're in unfamiliar area. You make, you don't remember where the light switch is. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly okay. Why she did it. Yeah. And I thought, oh my I just, God, just, who invented this? Yeah, I was just glad the lighted hamper, close hampers, went away because it became a problem at my house. So. No bet. Because <laughs> uh, he's peeing in the hampers. It took me a second. Well, well, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and Sheila, you know, we I stopped. Uh, well, you took the pictures of me doing the decorations. Yeah, so that's, that's gonna fun. that's gonna flare up about six thirty at night. <laughs> Y'all thought I was kidding, huh? So, because last night I did a green room shot with this. Right, yeah, yeah. The Christmas decorations. Well, 
I just happened to walk by and they're doing it. So I'm like, all right, we got to do this. So thank you for taking the picture. No, it was fun. But she's like, you know, it, it's like, okay, any suggestions on what we can do? And I'm like, I got a couple, but I don't want to hurt your feelings. And, and you know, and we talked and I shared, you know, a couple plates and a couple forks and knives and, you know, the microwave's good. And, and that's, you know, it's just one of those things where, okay. Like I say, you got a little cupboard or something there mm -hmm. with all that stuff. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a great idea. But it, you know, it's one of those things. It's an incre it's incremental gains. You know, it's always the, like the littlest things. Like we didn't start out with this this bar here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the open stage, and this we didn't even have this big of a stage when we first started. They added on to it, and so it's every time somebody stays here, it's like it's just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You know, something gets shifted, and it's eventually. I'm probably within a year, you know, this place, I mean, we're going to have it so dialed in. I mean, it seems awesome now, and it is, but I just think by the time we hit that point, the green room will be completely finished, you know, we'll have everything dialed in upstairs. You know, uh, comics, I've got people already calling me from, like, the East Coast and the West Coast. Dude, dudes, I've never heard of before, and they're like, man, we've heard about your club. It's like, that's great, I don't mind bringing in new talent, you know, give them a shot and things, but... You know, I'd rather stick with the Jerry Donovans and the Dave Dugans and the BTs and people like that that I know will come in and crush, you know, and I want to give them this experience. And then every once in a while, I'll bring in some new dudes, you know, and ladies. See, and for me, I, have to, I can tell you, on my roster, we'll come in here and crush. And there are a lot of same guys you know, but maybe there's some you I don't know and or you know that I don't that's the whole thing, the networking aspect yeah. of it. Yeah, I want to cross pollination. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and it's, it's huge to me yeah. if I say to somebody, "Hey, man, have you worked with this with this person?" And they're like, "I have." Okay, what do you think? They're a great feature. Okay. All right. Thank you. By the way, I appreciate that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean seriously, it's it's that I think one of the common mistakes is people try to move up too fast mm -hmm. and there's a process and there's a reason for the process Amen. and you know um, if you're the fifth picture on the poster okay um, you can call yourself a headliner but people like me call you a closer <laughs> which you come do the final 15 20 minutes right. and that's perfect you're that's your wheelhouse it's going to work great um, to do an hour in front of 14 people, that's a stretch. Yes, sir. That's a stretch. And uh, But at that point, like we say, um, to your point, you're hearing from people that you've never met or don't even know of. I've had 11 texts since I posted that I'm coming here on Thursday. Who books it? Let me know what it's like. And now that I've done the night, they're still, they're still coming. Still out. talking. Yeah. yeah. Who books it? Ah, some asshole. And then, uh, <laughs> no, that's fair. That's yeah. totally no, fair. it's not. It's <laughs> and you know it. But that's the thing is, uh, you know, it, 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 knowing who's going to fit what room. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and I know, for, you know, I did a gig corporate wise, I think it was two years ago, where it was a company thing. And the lady who booked it was our demographic. Mm -hmm. I mean, his and ours. You're not here yet. I'm not. I'm 47. I'm like, hold up there, brother. Okay. <laughs> ah! Okay. So, I said, she, she was our demographic, so I said, oh, this would be great. Well, I get in there, there is a person over 30. And they don't want to listen to some guy, but they don't want to listen to their uncle's friend right. uh, for 45 minutes. Okay. So, it's like, if you're not right for the room, yeah, that doesn't mean you're not right. There's plenty of other venues where you're a fit, okay? Uh, don't bring in this particular guy for a church gig. And sometimes don't bring in the church gig guy to that Elks Lodge in the middle of nowhere that just right. simply wants you to get raunchy and rough and let's have a good time. Right. And honestly, that was what, you know, uh, Dave Dugan was supposed to be here. We're glad you could, you could pitch in and come here. But... One of the things that Sean, I think, does really well is matching uh, headliner and features. Yes. Base is pretty good, right? So it's like, when I heard yours come, I was like, yeah, okay, he's, he's in my wheelhouse. This yep. is a good fit. We're going to be working. And Elise, too. Yeah. yeah. Elise, Elise, too. She has, oh you know, I love the nursing aspect of it, you know. And the thing is, and you do the same, right? So, you know, we're talking about, you know, 
we're always asked the same questions a lot of times on podcasts. And thank you, because this is way out of the realm. Um, Jonathan Winters, who a lot of people won't even know. I do. Jonathan Winters <coughs> said, just tell the truth and people will laugh. And that's the honest to God's truth. I build on my life experiences. I tweak it here and there, but by and large, what you see is what I am. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. and and uh, you just build around that. You know, I, I shared. You know, I, I'm not. You know, when you said who, you, the guy last week has three million followers. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. I have right. three. <laughs> They're outside, <laughs> actually. Yeah, right. right? <laughs> <laughs> They're in the car. <laughs> but that's just the kind of thing. Is for me, you know, I was like ramping it up, and I'm like, my God, how many social media platforms do I need to check? You know, I'm old, I'm a Facebook guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on Instagram, but not to really post, just to follow, because there's some funny stuff on there. Right. You know, and uh, I, little known fact, but I'm so blessed because my son, I guy I talk about, lives in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Wanted to get into comedy. Okay. Okay. And five, seven years ago, he's calling me. He's like, Dad, every time I go to the open mic, it's a raffle. And the same people win the raffles in the same order each and every week. And this is bullshit. And I go, well, here are your options. You can leave, walk away, knowing that, hey, at least you tried. Or you can stay, and you can keep going. And one day, there's going to be a crack in the doorway. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. how you walk in and you get to, okay? I said, don't be a dick to the people who aren't choosing it. Just simply nod and whatever I can, and help the room, help the effort, okay? Yeah. Don't just show up and go up and leave, you know. If you can volunteer, if you can participate, if you can contribute, let that be the way, right? Let's do, fast forward. Do your time. He's now, uh, the house MC at American Comedy Company in San Diego. Nice. That's awesome. He runs there. I don't even want to call it an open mic because it's so much more. They get 150 to 200 people on Tuesday night for their open mic. Holy shit. Nice open mic. Exactly. That's not even an open That's a show. He runs it. Okay. And I convinced fatherly pride, if that's my fault, I'll take it all day is the fact that a lot of people come to see him because he's the guy on stage every three or four minutes. Right. Okay. And he can be hilarious or he can be brutal. If somebody gets up there and they've been a pain in the ass and they get their time and they eat it, oh, oh you ain't getting out that door scot free. Right. Okay. Take your long. So he is, you know, uh, let's see, he just opened for Jeff Garland. Uh, last week was Jeremy Piven, Dana Carvey, and God rest, and, you know, love and thoughts to Dana Carvey. Uh, his son just passed, as we know. Yep. Uh, and my son was like, Dad, I just met with him six months ago. And we were following each other and this and that. I was like, okay. And then he's done uh, Jay Moore. He's done Michael Rappaport. He's done, I mean... I once met Bill Hicks's brother at baggage claim. <laughs> That's my career. And <laughs> hey, they want me to open for, you know, uh, Polly Shore, but the kids have birthdays that weekend, so I, and that's like now the other thing he did, he's he's a techno technical genius as far as mm. the best story for him is they had a show. And I can't remember who it was. Thursday night, 250 people. The whole weekend was sold out. Well, they can't get sound or figure out why their point of sale system doesn't work. Owner calls them in a panic. He says, all right, I'll be down in two hours. Don't do anything, don't touch anything. So he gets down and he's working around, he's going all over everything. He says, all right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run the sound through my phone. And I'm going to be here making sure, okay, this is toast. I don't know what's going on, but we're going to run it through my phone. We've got toast. Okay? Yeah. So next thing you know, going from canceling, 
sold out show or whoever it was smashed and all the owner knows is this didn't happen without you. Mm -hmm. So he's actually the owner's like right hand man. And uh, and he's he's just he's featured. He maybe could headline, I don't know, but I can't make that call on his dad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's the kind of thing just watching his career. And see, with San Diego, here's the deal. You got your LA people saying, you know what, writers are on strike, or I got no filming to do, or we don't start production. I'll run down, do a Thursday to Sunday, six shows, take the door, and off I go. Which, how many thousands of dollars could that be? Well earned for whoever it is. Sure. But he's in that, you know, in that circuit. Right. And uh, oh, who's the other guy? T.J. Miller. Oh, yeah, yeah. He opened for him, and they got along yeah. great. And, uh, and you know, he, he's very good at just kind of feeling them out. You know, if you want to be left alone, I'll leave you alone. You know, you want to hang out, I'll hang out. You want to be friends, I'll be friends. But it's your call. And I, and I try to tell you, that's, that's the approach you need to take. Right. I, and I just keep waiting for him to say, well, so-and-so wants to take me on the road and be his opener, okay? Which won't happen. And the reason being is twofold. Uh, he's got a family, wife, two beautiful kids, full-time gig. So he's not in that position to be the touring comedian. Right. It's a different world, too. And he's happy doing yeah. what he's doing. You know, he's thrilled. You, you know, I mean, imagine that. If you can pick and choose which high-profile headliner you want to get to work for. And I'm like, you little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I got to, uh, I was on the same plane as uh, Jim Gavigan was. It was a week later, but we were on the same plane, uh, but there was several days in between. Yeah, so I was <laughs> in the plane, right, right. <laughs> yeah, you love to walk through first class just to see who's there and you're not. Yeah. They, they got on first and they did it. get to get off first. Right. Yeah, yeah, do you see where, I think, is it Delta or United that's saying, no, we're going to board from the back first? Yep. Which makes all the sense it in the world. Makes better sense. You know, makes all the sense in the world. Right. What does the difference make if you're sitting and waiting or sitting and waiting? Or standing and waiting. Right. Well, the standing I get, but you know what? You're going to be probably on your butt for three hours, four hours maybe, depending. So is standing the worst thing you could be doing? Oh. So. I just when pe I, I tend to when stuff happens like that on planes and everything when people stand up you know and I've taken buses planes whatever around the country they all at the same time yeah. I just wait right I just let them do their thing they can elbow and do all that shit and I'll, I'll get up after I'm a fat guy, guy. It takes me about three or four seconds to get out of the chair anyhow so. well and the funny thing about it is you know you always have that person who's like see they're up first I'm coming out you know mm -hmm. and I moved up one row. Well, good for you, man. Yeah, you're not yeah, getting out any faster than the front. Right. Yeah. It's just like when you're driving down the road and somebody busts their ass to get around you, not uses the stoplight. Yeah. You're just sitting behind them. I, I always do the same thing. I go. And they're usually in a pinto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that stuff. All right. So um, we've got a little bit of time left, and I know we've been. It's awesome to hear about your son, and I love uh, the comedy stories, but there's something about this building. That we talked about this morning. Oh, that we'd yeah. be remiss if we didn't go back and visit it. Yes. Um, this building has uh, some extra guests in it mm -hmm. at night, and you you've had experience had some experiences, and we kind of made <coughs> notes today. So, what happened? All right. uh, it was just voices through the vent, and I'm thinking, who's here at 5:30 in the morning? You know, nobody. And I'm like. And it wasn't just a, wait, did I hear something? It was a dialogue back and forth. And I thought, well, welcome to it. If you guys need a weighted blanket, there's one in the other. <laughs> uh, you know, I got dibs on the right-hand bar lounger instead of the fireplace. So, and I'm, I'm, you know, we talked about it. I don't have any problem believing in a third dimension or another dimension or anything like that. I refuse to believe this is a one and done. Yep. And that if you have unresolved issues, maybe you carry those forward until they're resolved or if they're ever resolved or what have you. Um, 
as I said, you know, my sister owned a home that used to be a Civil War hospital and a stop on the Underground Railroad. Yeah. And I've had first-hand experiences. And people say, ah, oh, you're crazy. No, you know what it was? It was the HVAC. Or no, you know what it was? And it's like, no, you know what it was? People out there, prior beings, still around. For whatever reason, I don't know. But, dude, if I hear chains coming across the floor, that ain't the HVAC. Footsteps coming up, all right. Conversation or yelling, you know. And you, wait a minute, that door was closed. Yep. And locked, and not locked, but closed, and the handle hit. So, you know, it, it, it's hard because people see stuff on the internet. Oh, you know, they hit a spring, or they did this, or they, they, you know, and I understand it. You know, the internet's like that. However, there's a lot that simply can't be explained. Yeah. yeah. There's more to this world than we know. And that's when I, you know, that's when I open to the universe, like you mentioned before, the universe, you know. Um, okay. I'm a believer. And, and you can call me crazy or whatnot, but hey, experience what I did and come away saying no. Yep. Right. Amen. Well, it's, I mean, you have been in this building just about as much as, yeah. as I have. What, I mean, what stuff have you seen, heard something? We heard something this morning. We heard something this morning, yeah. Footsteps. And it just all of them, we're just standing here and it's like, it's like somebody's walking across the floor or something like that. Sean, you know, he does that, uh, I don't know what it is, it's like, you know, this pose. He's listening, and he just runs up the stairs, and it's like, yes, there's nobody up there, Sean. It's just the ghosts, you know. I know, but on the off chance, like, somebody's gotten to the building, you know, I'm GM here, so right. I check, yeah. make sure. You no, know, and I'm up there, I'm looking around, hello, 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 and I just went, okay, yeah. I heard you. And I came back downstairs, and I asked. Yeah. Yeah, I, I heard it, too. I did. I, but, you know, so I, I used to hang out at this uh, Civic Theater in Bristol, Indiana, which is about an hour from here, and it does have a ghost. His name's Percival, and I've experienced him on a number of occasions. Um, he's always been cordial, uh, but he's definitely there, um, yep. wandering around, doing whatever it is he does. He's got a pet name, but uh, it's, I don't know if it's just the vibe you, you lend to the environments, but I think if, if you're okay with it and, and you're respectful, generally speaking, I've not had any negative issues. But I have sensed things. It's like, there's more to this than I can see. There's more to this than my senses can perceive. But I know there's something going on. I just don't know what it is. And I'm okay with that. Well, and there's so many of these theaters that are located in downtown that have been around for 200 years. Yeah, that's what El, El Civic Theater, Bristol Opera House. Yes. Well, what I love, one part about those old theaters is never knowing who from Vaudeville performed mm -hmm. it. I know I've done things that W.C. Fields was at, or That's Abbott cool. and Costello, or, yeah. Same and, stage. Same stage. And, you know, you think about it, like, okay, we're back on the uh, train, horse and buggy type thing, maybe some cars, but, okay, so you're doing Chicago on this weekend, Detroit next weekend, what's in between? And now all of a sudden you're doing a Tuesday night in in Lowell, Michigan, or a Thursday night in Three Oaks, Galeen, Michigan. Galeen, Michigan. <laughs> God, we love our Galeen. Remind me, please, tonight of that. Uh, you know, one thing I did, I, I left out a story about my son, and you mentioned Comedy Store, and that's what made it jar. So, <clears throat> you know, one of the things is reciprocality. Okay, you help me, I help you. Right. And we help those. Big in who, comedy. Okay. And it's a networking thing. Yep. There's, there's yeah. absolutely, you know, there's no nepotism or any crazy stuff going on. It's just the way that it is. We all try to help each other. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so I'm at the comedy store, and I always get to do three minutes of the show when I'm there on Tuesday nights. Nice. And it's always a kick when your son introduces his dad, right? Yeah. And, uh, so we do it one night, and we're in the hallway, and he says, hey, Dad, this is uh, Mike. He runs the comedy store in La Jolla. I go, oh, man, nice to meet you. You know, and uh, my son says something about, you know, getting on stage. And the guy goes, hey, man, I can't get both of you on. And my son says, no, 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 I don't care about me. Get my dad on comedy store, okay? He's like, okay, got it, all right? And the guy's very 
particular about how he goes about it, but we get there and the list is, I'm going on and my son's following at the comedy store, right? Wow. So, I go on and I do fine, I do good. It's not like here, okay? It's Southern California and I'm me, okay? So, goes fine and he's coming on after. As nervous as I've ever been since the day he came, he came on the earth. Okay, I'm nervous. Oh my God, you know what are you? Nervous to? for him. I'm nervous yeah, for him. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then I'm like, oh my God, just please got to go. Please got to smash this. Yeah. Well, those, that's his. You know, he's he's in Southern California. He, that's his. He knows uh, that's all his the He knows what's gonna hit, and he smashes. And I'm sitting there watching, and I'm like. <laughs> However, it was then made known that we were the only father and son team to ever do the same show at the comedy store. That's cool. That's, yeah, that's, that's very cool. Except awesome. Holly Shore and his dad. Oh. So that's the company we're in. Okay. And I thought, I'll take it. Yeah. You know? And, uh, uh, never met Paulie. I know of his dad. I hear, you know, I, I know it was all crazy the way the store in LA turned out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, where it is, his dad was hysterical. He opened for Sinatra for years. That I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, sure. uh, you know, it is amazing just to read about it after the fact. Because I'm a, I'm a comedy history student, buff, whatever you want right. to call it. I can't read enough about it. Um, because the one thing about comedy is in so many other endeavors, no matter your level of success, we all start in the same place. Yeah. And that is there was a time you had never gone on stage. And then was my first time. Yeah, me too. And then there was the first time in comedy too. <laughs> yeah, you do that to the audience. I do, I do that. <laughs> All right, so here's a quick here's a quick question for you guys. Um, your very first time doing stand up, because you said we all have the first time. You're 100 right. Mm -hmm. Bomb or kill? You first. Bomb. That wasn't bad. It was okay, but I was so nervous. I did my five minute set in like a minute and a half. Right. Yeah. I was. I just blazed through it as fast as I got laughs, but it was. I I, I couldn't talk fast enough. So okay. that was, I guess, I would say it was a bomb in comparison to what I do now. Well, because you, that's a, that, that, that's tough because it's an unfair comparison. Because I look back at the room. you were at the first time. I know. So, so, club on Broadway, Springfield, Illinois, June of nineteen eighty-eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, seven minutes. I'm not gonna brag, but I crushed. Nice. For four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I ate it hard for three. <laughs> okay. And sadly, it's okay to eat it for the first three and crush for four. That's the order you want. You don't want this. Right. Because when you're doing shadow puppets. <laughs> Just to fill your time, people forget about the four minutes. Oh, quickly. So, it was that. It was a little of everything. And the most amazing thing that happens during that is, aha, that's right. What I thought was funny, they think is funny. Right. So that's all. It's like golf. You know, you're going to hit nine terrible shots and two good ones. And the two good ones are what keep you playing. Come back right. next week, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, that was 1988. I didn't step back on stage until February of 2005. Uh -huh. Scared you? No. You know, what it was? you know what it was? It's like, okay, been there, done that. What else we got? You know, I've been on movie sets. You want to be a movie star? No, I've been there, done that. I know what it's like, it sucks. You know, nobody knows what goes into the finished product, like we were talking about. Right. Uh, you know, um, 
So, and then with my life at the time, being a single dad with small kids, what am I going to do? You know, being some one nighter in Enid, Oklahoma, getting a call that, you know, so and so's in the emergency room. Yeah. Now, what do I, do I got to get a sitter? Hey, uh, oh, Mr. Nighter, you need me Friday night? No, actually, I need you Thursday until Sunday when I get back. Come on. So, yeah. I realized it, but I, here's the thing I became more of a student. And the one thing that happened was when Last Comic Standing, the first season, 2004, okay? I'm watching on TV, and I'm like, that was okay. That wasn't very good. Now that was good. But I'm not the type of person that would say, oh man, those guys suck, that's bullshit. If you can do better, get up and show up. Right. And at that time, my son was living in New York, okay? So I went out and visited him. And then I had a thing where I was going back and forth from Grand Rapids to New York for different periods. It'd be three weeks a year, come back a few weeks, back and forth like that. And I went to Mass just out of a tourist thing at uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. Just check it out. Walking down the street, the two guys say, hey, you want to go to a comedy shop? I'm like, well, who doesn't? I'm like, well, we have one tonight. It's okay, who's the comedians? And they're talking, it was an open mic. I'm like, all right, I'll come watch. And once again, Rose, Rose, I was the audience that night. <laughs> all comedians and me. And I'm watching, and I think, you guys do this tomorrow night? Yeah, absolutely. Come on back. So I come back. And I don't know if I should do this. Who all watches this? Because I want to tell you the first jump I ever did. Okay. Okay, do it again. We're going dark here, people. That's when you think they turn on when they turn on. Yeah, I'm to hear this. So there was a lady who got up the night before and she said she's all just railing on Mac and dating and this and that. And it's like, okay, hey, it's not funny. It's not original, but keep going. And I get up there the next night and I said, hey, sweetheart, you know about your dating problems? Maybe it would help if you didn't use your pussy for an ashtray. Oh, 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 oh. oh, shit. And she went on the floor and it was R-O-F-L. Rolling on the floor laughing before there was an R-O-F-L. Oh, my God. And she died, and everybody else just went, oh, 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 oh. did he really say that? <laughs> and then I go, by the way, what are you doing after the show? <laughs> <laughs> and then I took out a cigarette and lit it. <laughs> right. God. So from there, started bouncing wow. around different open mics, you know, and remember this is 0405, right? For Bill Burr was Bill Burr and Jim Gaffigan was Jim Gaffigan. And uh, you know, I we would see different people and just kind of and then seeing what they became it is fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I love I love success for other people. You know, I'm not one of these oh but oh, 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 oh. man, go for it. Yeah. Run. Yeah. You know, I may not, I, your, your comedy may not be for me, but that doesn't mean you're not funny. No. Right. Okay, it's just, I don't, I, don't, I don't connect. But you know what, I love seeing them connect. That's the beauty of it. And uh, walking down the street, walking by NYU, and there's a big long line. The guy says, hey man, you wanna go to a comedy show? I'm like, who doesn't? But what is it? They go, it's a Comedy Central tape. I said, okay. So instead of the back of the line, I'm just by myself. They put me to the front. All right. And the reason is for seating. Okay. If they, when you have a pocket of one seat, I'm the guy they put in it. And other people who, okay, we have three here, four here. Filling in the holes. Yeah. yeah. It's an eight row, eight seat row, or whatever it is. Right. Okay. You need to be here. So 
I'm sitting there like, this is cool. You know, you see the cameras going. It was surreal. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. And uh, lights go down. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Bill Burr. Hmm. And I'm like, who's this guy? Oh, Jesus. This is early, young Bill Burr. Head of right. hair, Bill Burr. Head of hair, Bill Burr. <laughs> wow. He did the bit about dating his now wife who lived up in Harlem and yep. happened to go up there. Oh, my God. Right, right. the subway. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. a great bit. It's a great bit. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. Him, Patrice O'Neill, Flight of the Concords, because they asked me to come back the next night. And so I went two nights and saw this stuff. And I was like, this is incredible. And then, here's funny, there was, another, there was an open mic, or showcase, whatever you want to call it, at a place called the Village Lantern, okay, on Tuesday nights. And I would go to watch. If I got to go up, that was cool. If not, nope, that's fine too. I'm sitting there, and who walks in, sits down next to me with his notebook? Bill Burr. Bill Burr walks up to the guy running the show and says, hey man, can I get on? And the guy says, sorry dude, we're all booked. And Bill says, all right, if anybody drops, let me know, I'll be over here. Couldn't have been more gracious and eloquent about it. Wow. And then he just sat there and went, and I'm sitting next to Bill Burr. And I probably missed my chance, but I want to be there. Hey, man, I saw your special the other man. You are really amazing. How come you're not going out there? This is bullshit. I'm going out. You know. Nah, man, I just right. chilled. I watched the great, watched the not so greats. And again, now that I see him all over the lexicon, I'm like, I remember that guy. Mm -hmm. I remember that guy. Yeah. So One of the key points you talked about is he had a notebook, right? So that's right. still a classic. You can spot comedians, right? So we don't know some of the open micers that walk in here, but they come in if somebody's carrying a notebook. Yep. Ninety-nine percent of the time, that's one of the micers. Yep. Yep. Just and don't, just don't bring it on stage. No. We, it, God, that's funny. We just had a discussion about that this morning, and how there is this just division yeah. out there about people bringing stuff on stage not bringing on stage, bringing a set list on stage, is it, you know, is it sacrosanct, should they, shouldn't they, um, you know, I, now I'm not for somebody bringing on a notebook and directly reading for it, the whole Janine Garofalo thing where she was like, that, I don't think that's okay, but if somebody brings a set list up and sets it down, you know, and they have their drink on it, I'm like, whatever. Right. Works. If it doesn't distract the show, I think that's always been my kind of Correct. common denominator. Thousand percent. If you're going back from the script, then yeah. that's a problem. Preach, brother. I think I just heard that the other day. Another the big thing that's out there. Preach. Bro. Preach. Is it? Is, it? Is, it? Is, it? is that something the kids are saying nowadays? I know there's bussing. Yeet is now old, apparently. Okay. Oh, my God. That's... Yeah, I don't know. Well, I was thrilled because about a year ago, I got it on PayPal. <laughs> and I'll find out that's the AOL of the cash system. So, like, I can't keep up. I, what, how does it go to the wayside so quickly? Because that's like I Cash don't. App and, you know, it's like Venmo. Venmo, yeah, Venmo and Zoink. That's going to be You know, we're going to get to a point where I just say, hey, Sean, I'm going to think the $50 that I owe you to you. Oh, you're got it. it. And that's just going to be in your bag. I got it. Okay, we're good. I uh, really are we that far off from it. I, mean, this, I don't know. Well, I mean, honestly, it, it seems like if you look back at any of the literature and, you know, art reflects society, you go back to the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and any sort of, you know, vision of what this would be when things started to, the, the damn thing went off the rails. With the exception of the flying cars mm -hmm. going all over the place, mm -hmm. I mean, I can't think of too much stuff that isn't happening right now that wasn't predicted before, you know, and all it's like the future is now kind of thing. And it's just, it's weird how putting this, like the whole AI thing, I, I mean, I don't know what you, where you guys are at on that, but as I just found out I'm what you stood for. Yeah. 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 Well, we don't have flying cars, but we have drones. Yeah. So there's a step, you know, next thing you know, you're going to put a motor and four wheels on that thing and all be single occupant first, and then you're going to get the station wagon and everything like that. Mm -hmm. so. how Frightening is that though? I mean, you could just be walking along, going down to TCBY if that's even a thing anymore, get some yogurt, froyo, 
and some guy who didn't pay a bill or didn't get you know his axle fixed the right way in his flying car just boom, you know, mm -hmm. drops on it. Well, I, I'm getting left behind by. I mean, I still have an AOL access, you know, account. I have that's my main email address is an AOL account. That's how old I am. Oh, I bet pokers line up when they. Oh see yeah, they, they're like uh, laughing as soon as they right. see well, it. Yeah. I got the same thing for Hotmail. <laughs> really, dude? Hotmail? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, what would you prefer? You know, I, I know it's it. It gets me how quickly the technology, and this is one of the things I, uh, one of my lesson plans is I talk about slang and how over the years, the generations, the way they try to take power away from the older generation is by changing the lexicon, mm -hmm. by co-opting language, and you know, you go back to the 60s, it's groovy, far out, you know. And things where older people are like, what the hell are they talking about? Mm -hmm. And so it's it was so funny. I would talk to my classes and I said, you know, so what are some of the new slang things? And they would tell me like GATT, G Y A T T, you know, which is a shortened version of God damn. And it refers to it. So if you say GATT, it means a woman's booty. If she's walking by, she's fine. Did you know that? No. I didn't either. <laughs> In my what's class, a, what's a booty? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, no, I guess I understand. Like I say, like hey, man, people paying with watches. Yeah, yeah. okay. And it, you know, talking on watches like Dick Tracy comics, where it's just like, oh, that's crazy time. No, they're literally like, hey, what's going on? But well, see, the funny thing, there was a period of time where nobody was wearing watches because you had your time on your phone, and you always had your phone with you. But now we're back to watches. You have to use them to pet there. Yeah, right there. That's it's I it's crazy. So. Trust me when I say in, in, in this, we have to help these youngsters. We do have to help them. Here's your options as a person who's watching all this advancement and development and everything. Your options are curse it, damn it, this is bullshit, like the way we used to do it, or you can adapt, evolve, and continue. And you have far better if you can adapt, evolve, and continue. Because it ain't going to change. No, and it's not going to slow down either. No. No. If, if, I, if I shake my fist at the not enough, I've been to turn around. Yeah. Yeah. So I just what I did is not only do I have my AOL account, but I also have a Gmail account now, so I can feel it. Yep. There you go. Well, that'll be fun. <laughs> you do feel it. <laughs> Thanks for chasing it, Brad. <laughs> Gmail was good till Brad got on it. <laughs> this one, this, actually, that's what the kid. That was the crazy thing. Uh, they were they were telling me all this stuff. And it was, it was funny because in one of my one-on-one -on -one classes, the kids were telling me all these like different slangs that they have. And then one of the kids goes, yeah, and there's, uh, there's za, too. What? And yes, it's the marijuanas oh. is what they're referring to when they say the za. And the, he said, yeah, and there, there's the za. And I've the heard kids, Haza at the Renaissance oh. Festival. But I know, this, is, this is it. But the, one of the other kids goes, dude, shut up. And I go, wait, wait, wait. This is a moment. This is a learning thing. Right. Why did you tell him to shut up? And he's like, well, that's ours. And I go, there you go. I said, this is you guys trying to take the power structure away from us by changing the language. You're changing the operating code. So we're left out. The older generations that belongs to you. I said, but here's the scary thing. It's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. You're going to get to this age, and then people are going to be like, the blicky blacky. And they're going to be like, what the hell's a blicky blacky? And us preach. And it's, it was just, it was weird watching it actually go down in front of me. And then when I pointed out to them, they just were like, oh, you know, because they didn't realize they were trying to be protective of it. So that was, that was weird. But neat. Yeah. All right, look, uh, we've been here for a little over an hour and a half. We've got shows tonight. Um, naps to take. Yeah. Naps to yeah. take. So uh, anything before we jump off here, um, Brad? Jerry, you want to leave us with? No, no, you go. Uh, well, I, uh, just so you know, it's great to work with Jerry. If you ever get the opportunity, I highly recommend it. And uh, forget this guy, don't work with Sean at all. It's a bad thing. You know, and uh, just so you know, it's Brad's first weekend featuring, and uh, and I can tell. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks. Yeah. I kid, man. The dude sets, you, I'll work with you anytime. Oh, and I, yeah, I love it. <laughs> there is, you know, and that's the other thing is I'll have things where I'm going. Who do I want to bring? Who's going to set the table? Connections. So that I, you know what I mean? That 100%. I'd work with you anytime. You know? That's awesome. And, Call uh, me. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. AOL. Uh, uh, give you my yeah, email. AOL. Sure. <laughs> no, I, is there a pay phone anywhere? Um, for me, um, like we talked about before, how all this happened, you know, to me it's a universe thing. Saying, hey man, you need to get your ass down to Niles, mm -hmm. which I would say yes to in a heartbeat, which obviously I did, and, uh, and do this. I didn't have this on my docket Monday to sit and have, and this has been great, thanks for having me, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then I'm just so looking forward to tonight. Mm -hmm. Comedy itself is an art form I feel so blessed to have gotten involved with. It's a privilege. And because I talk about it a little bit, but laughter is such an important component to our society and our civilization. Amen. Right? We take ourselves far too seriously and um, the beautiful thing like when we do the fundraisers or things like that what a blessing to be able to take something you truly love and help advance a cause be it cancer be it uh, pet adoption be it you know I've done a ton of them and uh, so that to me that's a lot of people to know is I go tomorrow on the way home I know people are going to think, what's on his schedule? What can I help fill it now that he's gone? Because um, that's how comedians go. Uh, but the fact is, I'm just blessed to be all part of it. I've been blessed to have interacted yeah. and, and seen you guys. And you say something in your in your, your stand-up about uh, being the last bastion of free speech. Yeah. And, it's a, and it's an important element. I mean, we're checking uh, the negative side of the culture. I mean, so we're... we're throwing jokes at the things that are wrong and things that are just silly and making sure everybody understands that. And it's, it's, we should be able to laugh at ourselves. And we should be able to say this is silly. And, and uh, the world is heading the wrong direction in a lot of places, except for up here behind those mics. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, if you feel you're going to be offended, don't come to a comedy show. Amen. Oh, God, I can okay, but don't come and tell people what they should and shouldn't say, what they can and can't think. That's not what it's about. Okay. Yeah. I, if that's the case, go get yourself a little studio in Beijing. <laughs> yeah. okay. They're very good at telling you what to think and what you can and can't say. Yes, right? credit score. And that's the one thing about our country that people just so take for granted. It's a lot of the activity going on here would not be tolerated in the countries that they're protesting for. Yeah, that's the crazy thing to me. And it's like... It's hard to understand. As I get older, it's worse too. I don't know about you. Oh yeah. Well, I think it ebbs and flows, comes and goes. Yeah. You know, but the sad thing is, every once in a while, there's a wake up call that comes, and then all of a sudden, we aren't two political parties. We're all one now, and we have to because there's catastrophe and tragedy, and we got to deal with it. Yep. Right. Been there before. We'll be there again. Yep. So. So talk about anything on a high note. Yeah, that was, that was possible. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, well, I, all good, all great. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you so much, man. It, you know, I I could do this for another two hours. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have the battery time. So. <laughs> um, but we do have shows. So, um, Jerry, thank you so much, Jerry Donovan. Thanks for having um, me. Where can they like seek you out? Uh, uh, JerryDonovan.com. J-E-R-R-Y D-O-N-O-V-A-N.com. I'm on Facebook currently. Sometimes I come and go on that because there's so much, you know, vitriol there that sometimes I just like to get off the grid. But right. you can always find my website. Okay, very cool. And where are you next week? Are you, uh, I have to do the rest of Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, that's so right, that's right. I'll be eating uh, December. I'll tell you what, Wednesday, December 3rd, I'm in Cherville, Indiana. I don't know how far that is from here, but I'll be down there. And then uh, St. Joe, Michigan, on the following night, and then I had I just had to check. And you know, most people say, "Oh, you're right. no, I write down the stuff right on a calendar with a pen. Take a picture of the calendar. <laughs> so if somebody says, "Hey, are you open?" Yep. I'm physically look at it. No, I physically look at it. Same, same. God same. help you if you take something and you're not at your calendar, mm -hmm. you know, then forget about it. Right. Okay. That'll yeah. happen a couple, three times. Have you ever had those? I kind of these. But have you ever had those things where somebody gives you a call like, "Hey, yeah, when you're uh, down here in like whatever Saskatoon or something, um, you know, blah blah blah," and you're like, "Wait a second, what? Yeah, you're performing tomorrow night." Mm -hmm. 
Yes. I've had those where I completely forgot that I was doing a show and it's like five hours away. Right. And I said yes to it six months ago. Right. Yeah. Been there. Yeah. All right, so uh, Mr. Miller? Yeah, uh, Comedy Daily uh, on uh, Facebook. If you want to get me there, you can get me uh, uh, bradmiller at gmail.com. Uh, hit me up there. Uh, I do have other than an AOL account. But uh, yeah, um, one of the house comics here at the Underground, so I'm usually hanging around here on the weekends, at least here recently. So here it is. I've got another show for improv uh, with the Deli at the end of uh, December, December 21st, uh, 22nd. Come see us. Great show. All right. Cool. Well, thanks everybody. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of good stuff today. Uh, learned a lot about the, the kind of the behind the curtains with, with stand up and things. And uh, you know, you can always tune in on uh, JG's uh, podcast, the JG Jukebox Ginger, uh, this network. And uh, you know, uh, thanks again. And uh, see us next week uh, when we're going to have uh, Chris Young and Otis Boggs. And uh, you know, for the Shaw Shaker Dam podcast, two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. It's, well, it's in the in the world of podcasting, they record these. Oh, so and so they can literally it. click on the next one. You kids these days. I know. Uh, as I was trying to do my exit here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, been Sean Shank for the Sean Shank Redemption podcast, and like I always say, uh, get busy laughing or get busy dying. Oh, cool, cool. Hey, that was fun. Yeah. Hey, you're right. I could still go on and on. Could continue to talk. Yeah, yeah, I was going to text you like, hey, no seven o'clock show tonight. Yeah, we're going to find something else to do. Well, it's almost one of those things where it's like I feel like you could take this crew and just sit everybody on the stage and have these discussions. Sure. And people still be entertained. Well, you know, and that's what I thought about. You could almost have a uh, come watch the cast or whatever. Yeah. I might start a podcast, but there's probably one already out there called The Green Room. Yes. Is there one out there? No, but I I haven't heard. I'm just saying, like, you that's a great idea. Following going on that. Right. Yeah. I'll